with coverage you can count on. This is KTAB News at 10. Good evening. Thank you for choosing KTAB News, coverage you can count on. I'm Bob Barton. And I'm Stacy Lopez. Tonight's top story is a direct result of our stormy weather. We go to Erath County near Dublin, where a mother and her two kids are found dead after rapid floodwaters swept their car away in the creek. KTAB sent our crew to the scene where a high water rescue mission began around 5.30 a.m. this morning. First responders at the scene tell KTAB a family of four was inside the car when it went into the water. They found the father clinging to a tree and were able to rescue him. But they searched for hours before finding the bodies of the mother and her children, ages seven and three, in the water. A woman who lives near the creek talked with us about how dangerous that area is. KTAB's Claire Kreitz has the story. They're not the first. There's been hundreds. With the intense amount of rain in just a short amount of time. We got probably a half a foot of rain just quickly overnight. And we have had a lot of good rainfall this year, so it was going to run quickly. This creek on Highway 1702 in Erath County can soon turn treacherous. From the naked eye, when you drive up to it, it really doesn't look that deep, but it is. Even for those who know the area well. I've personally lived here about 32 years on this. We built a house out here, um, but my family's the original family from this county, and they were here in 1856. Like Carolina McNutt and her son, this flooding can be deceptive. He was honest with me. He said, you know, even knowing that road like I do, it didn't look that formidable yet. And the only reason he stopped was he saw the car that stopped across the way from him and he filmed it and come to find out the likelihood is that was that family. The lack of markers also doesn't help. It's just really dangerous. And unfortunately for this family of four, they're not the first and probably won't be the last. I really hope that now someone will get out here and at least mark that off for so many people that don't realize it. In Erath County with coverage you can count on, Claire Kreitz, KTAM News. Thank you, Claire. The Dublin Fire Chief tells KTAB the last body, that of the three-year-old, was found at 12.30 this afternoon. The accident happened about 5.30 this morning. Not all of the stories about the storms are quite that tragic. As across the big country and heartland, rainfall amounts vary in Abilene from about one inch to nearly four. It made driving difficult along with muddy lots and some blocked streets because of high water. All low water crossings in many area towns have been blocked off until the water recedes. With anywhere from one to four inches of rain and more in some places, damage is widespread following the storms. These these drone pictures from Dove Video show damage of the Blake Full and Wider car dealership in Eastland. Trucks hit, structures torn apart. High wind, heavy rain, and hail made up these storms. Dozens of cars parked in a parking garage at Dallas Love Field were flooded after the overnight thunderstorms. Video show the lower level with water up to the top of many vehicles. City of Dallas crews were pumping the water out. We have updates on several deadly traffic accidents in the last few days in our area. 39-year-old Brian Carter of Clyde died when the 18-wheeler he was riding in went out of control on Interstate 20 in Roscoe at mid-afternoon Tuesday. The driver of the big rig, 64-year-old Ray Richard of Abilene, was not seriously hurt. According to the DPS, the truck tractor pulling a tanker trailer went out of control and rolled into the median on I-20. A motorcycle accident near Lake Sweetwater on Saturday killed 70-year-old Ramon Valdez of Snyder. The Department of Public Safety reports Valdez lost control of his motorcycle on a curb on FM 1856. Late Tuesday afternoon, a deadly crash on Texas Highway 36 south of Eula. The DPS reports a car driven by Narendra Kumar Bhakta of Cross Plains hydroplaned on the wet highway and hit an 18-wheeler heading in the opposite direction. The 58-year-old Bhakta died at the scene. The trucker was treated for minor injuries.
In Texas news, a man who orchestrated one of the most gruesome hate crimes in U.S. history was executed Wednesday for the dragging death of James Byrd Jr. nearly 21 years ago. John William King, who was an avowed racist, was put on death row for chaining Byrd to the back of a truck and dragging his body for nearly three miles along a secluded road in the Piney Woods outside Jasper in far southeast Texas. That's where this next story takes place. A look back at the crime. Simply put, the town of Jasper is known for James Byrd's murder. It was similar to lynchings of the past, of the Jim Crow era. And for something to happen like this in the late 90s, it was... It was appalling. Photographer Sarah Wilson and author Ricardo Ainsley visited Jasper in the years after the murder to tell the story in a book and photo exhibit that's now touring the state. I think to this day they still sort of are living in the shadow of uh, the murder of James Bird. The pictures are striking in their simplicity. The road where Bird was dragged, the chain used to tie him to a truck, and the truck he was dragged behind. Unfortunately, I imagine that it's the view of James Byrd Jr. Um, for the terrible, terrible final moments of his life. There's the innocent, like the young boy who, along with his father, found Byrd's body and told Wilson he thought it was a deer. He's someone that I would like to check in with again. And the guilty, John William King, who met with them on death row. He did not talk about James Byrd as a three-dimensional person and uh, he put a lot of energy I would say into kind of distancing himself so from James Byrd and from the murder so uh, he leaned forward at one point and I saw that just his forehead was touching the glass and for me that that said a lot um, it showed kind of the dark side of Bill King the pictures show the who, the what, and the where of a heinous crime, but perhaps no one will ever be able to explain why. And our thanks to John Belkovich for that report. John William King was executed in Huntsville earlier this evening. His co-defendant, Lawrence Russell Brewer, was executed in 2011. And the third participant, Sean Allen Berry, was sentenced to life in prison. Well, you may have been hearing and seeing the first B-1 bombers flying in the big country sky in about a month. The Lancers are back in the air after concerns over its ejection seats grounded the entire 62 aircraft fleet in March. The B-1Bs were all grounded by Global Strike Command's General Timothy Ray, former 7th Bomb Wing Commander at Dias Air Force Base. The Air Force said it ordered the stand down and inspections after finding issues with the rigging of the drag chute during a routine inspection of the system. The drag chute system corrects the seat's angle to allow an airman to safely eject from the bomber. As each jet is inspected, it is returned to service. Sweetwater is seeing some major additions to the community. Count them off. Five projects, including a new Sutherland's lumber yard, a dog park close to being finished, a new housing development, a cooler company, and a railroad project. The Sweetwater Economic Development Corporation telling KTAB the surge came after the community switched from a Type A corporation, which only allows for new primary jobs, to Municipal A Development District, which allows for more retail and quality of life projects. We want people to have a good reason to be here. Not only is it a good job, hopefully we'll have a better community to be prepared for them to be able to live here and raise their families. The five projects should be completed by the end of the year. In tonight's Eye on Education, a Cooper High School student accomplishing something no one else in AISD has done, graduating from high school while graduating from college. Michael Potosnak is a senior at Cooper. Next month, he will not only receive his high school diploma, but also his level two certification in welding from Cisco College here in Abilene. He has been able to successfully complete the program through dual credit, which means he didn't have to pay a dime for college. Kind of start a standard for people that don't want to go to college, you know, because I'm not all everybody's built for college and they all, you know, some people just 
don't want to. He's got a go-getter attitude. Uh, he's motivated all the time. He's smart and he takes it seriously and he, he wants to be one of the best. Congratulations to Michael. He told KTAB News he has already been looking at jobs in the welding industry. So once he receives both credentials next month, he'll be ready to hit the ground running. Good for him. Still ahead on KTAB News at 10, the Abilene Public Library's LibCon kicks off tomorrow. How the convention of characters has grown over the years. And our own character, he's here with the forecast. <laughs> See, I, do, I, sometimes just set it up. I don't have to say it. There it is. Uh, Very good. I did it. I could, I could feel it coming. <laughs> it's kind of like that rain last night. I could, I could just hear it on its way. Well, the rain has moved away from our area. It's going to be a nice, peaceful, quiet night. A lot of us will be ready for bed shortly, that's for sure. Look at our numbers today. Only 61 degrees normally would be about 80. We're going to be closer to normal tomorrow. We're going to talk about some rain totals from around the area and a lot of sunshine when we come back. With coverage you can count on, Bob Bartlett, Stacy Lopez, and Chief Meteorologist Sam Nichols. This is KTAB News at 10.